Today we recap the latest NHL trade rumors as we get closer to the NHL All-Star break. Today we're covering teams like the Senators, the Leafs, as well as the Calgary Flames, Boston Bruins, and the New York Rangers. We have some updates regarding the Arizona Coyotes' new arena potential relocation situation. Plus we have news from the NHL waiver wire. We might have some big updates soon on international hockey events, including World Cup and Olympic participation. Plus it's been a big day of developments in the 2018 World Junior case. We now know the full identities of the five players facing charges all that and more coming up next so welcome back to another video here at top shelf hockey as i mentioned it's been quite a day of nhl news all kinds of developments here and a variety of key stories that we've been following and reporting on here on the channel uh, first up before we get into some of the uh, more in-depth stories we do have news from the NHL waiver wire today, we had a player on waivers yesterday, which was Devin Shore from the Seattle Kraken. He was uh, cleared. He was not picked up by another club, so he can be reassigned to their minor league affiliate, which I believe they've already done that. And today we had the Ottawa Senators place centerman Rourke Chartier on waivers as well for the purpose of being demoted to the American Hockey League. I know by Senators fans, it was a little bit surprising to see Chartier on waivers. Not a big name by any means. Uh, an honest player that works hard, plays a 200-foot game, penalty killer. You know, only averages 10, 11 minutes a night in your bottom six. But like I said, he's been good on face-offs, uh, penalty kill. Just a, you know, a hard-working player that the coaches certainly appreciate playing the right way and playing defensively sound hockey. You get very little offense out of Chartier. But for the most part, you know, the sense of been missing players like that. So I think a lot of players were, or fans, sorry, were a little bit uh, surprised by this move. But the, the problem here is that the Sens are in a predicament with the cap. Uh, they have Anton Forsberg, who's on long-term injury reserve. Uh, he's expected to return after the All-Star break. Now, the Senators have one more game, which is tomorrow night against Detroit, uh, before their version of the All-Star break kicks in. Now, unfortunately for the Sens, uh, somebody's going to have to be demoted, and here's why. Um, basically, uh, the NHL requires teams to have two active goalies on their roster. Right now, the Senators have Jonas Corposalo and Mad Sogard. Sogard, of course, is still you know, a fairly uh, young developing goalie, and somebody right now that they would like to be able to go back to the minors for the All-Star break. The Sens have like nine or ten days off. Over the course of the break, they don't really want him sitting around not playing hockey and developing for that long stretch of time. So to send him down, they need to have another active goalie on the roster. Rather than call up another goalie, they want to activate Forsberg because he's going to be able to play after the All-Star break anyway, right? But to activate Forsberg, they need some additional cap space. They have 14 forwards right now on the roster. Somebody had to go on waivers to be put down, whether it be Zach McEwen, Rourke Chartier, one of those guys, Kostelik, and they opted to put Chartier. Uh, they figure he's 27, a late bloomer, you know, doesn't really have a ton of NHL experience making the most of his opportunity, and he's probably less likely to get picked up. So that's the rationale behind it. I know there's a lot of confusing uh, Sens fans out there, which I was a little bit confused at first too. But when you look at the, the optics of it and needing a goalie, it kind of makes more sense now. So we'll see tomorrow if Chartier clears or if he's picked up by another NHL club a couple of the quick injury updates as well uh, jack hughes is definitely not going to be participating in the nhl all-star game it uh, looks like he's still going to likely making an appearance um but he'll be replaced by uh, devil's teammate uh, jesper bratt so bratt will replace hughes in the competitions hughes was supposed to be participating in the 12 player skills competition as well he's been replaced in that event by matthew barzell uh, so Barzell will take his spot there. Um, Elise Peterson, I believe, is going to be joining Quinn Hughes. Uh, I know uh, Jack Hughes and Quinn Hughes are co-captaining one of the uh, three-on-three teams and are going to be drafting the team together. But since Hughes can't play, they're putting Peterson and Hughes to spot. But like I said, I believe that Hughes is still going to be there and work with Quinn to help draft the team and make an appearance and still uh, participate in some of the fun that goes along with it uh st louis blues player mackenzie mckeckern is done for the year he had to have a season ending shoulder surgery i believe at this point he's expected to be recovered in time to make it to training camp next year but mckeckern in st louis is done 
Now, I put out a video earlier in case you uh, haven't seen it. Uh, it's been a big day of developments when it comes to um, the full identities being confirmed of the five players that are uh, wanted by London police to surrender and face charges of the sexual assault allegations from that World Junior team that's been under investigation for about, about 18 months or more now. Um, so now, of course, we knew Alex Formanton had... Uh, as was confirmed to be one of the five as of, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that he turned himself into police and we had uh, news reports confirming that he had done so. His lawyers put out statements. And then today there was a report from Rick Westhead early in the day uh, confirming from separate sources, two sources that he had, who the other four were, which were the four players that were on leave from their various NHL teams, including Dylan Dubé of the Flames, Carter Hart of the Flyers, and Michael McLeod and Cal Foote of the New Jersey Devils. Now, of course, most people had already connected the dots and kind of put two and two together and figured these players are all on leave. They're all connected to that team. We know there's five players facing charges. You kind of do the math and add it up and figure, well, this has got to be the case, right? But like I said before, we could not, it's not fair for anybody to go publicly here and, you know, assume guilt or assume that they are the players facing the charges without 100% confirmed. They very well could have had another reason to take a leave from their team. Although it seemed unlikely, most of us kind of figured that was the case, but to go out there making claims just wasn't responsible reporting by anybody. So that's why you didn't really see that. At least I did. And I certainly wasn't about to partake in that as well. But all of these other four players had statements put out by their lawyers representing them uh, in the last number of hours here since the, this afternoon and evening. Uh, all lawyers have confirmed that those all the five players are all indeed facing charges of sexual assault and that they all right now are claiming to be innocent and are looking forward to trying to clear their name in court. Now, Rick Westhead also confirms, uh, which I didn't include in the video earlier uh, because we didn't know at the time, but based on the Ontario justice system and the court backlog, this is unlikely to go to trial until at least 2026. We could be waiting almost two years before the trial even starts. Um, so that's going to be a long time. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is the four players out of the five that are currently under NHL contract right now are all on a paid leave of absence. That very well could change. The NHL still will not comment uh, as of right now, even though all of their lawyers put out statements confirming they've indeed been charged. Uh, the NHL has not commented. I suspect we will not get official comment. I mean, you never know, but I doubt it that we'll see it before Monday when the London police have their press conference and make everything officially announced. At that point, I would suspect that the NHL will follow suit and announce I mean, something. I don't know what it's going to be. They, they may announce that these players have been suspended pending the um, trial. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, I'm not sure legally what they can do. So they're obviously likely going to advise of that and make a comment on the situation at the very least. At that point in time on Monday, it would be my suspicion. But for right now, all of these players are claiming that they're innocent and they're looking forward to having an opportunity to clear their names. The other big thing is the four that are under NHL contract right now, they're all pending restricted free agents. They're all guys that are on expiring deals. So as of this summer, they will not be under an NHL contract. So I don't know how this is going to go. I would suspect right now that their NHL careers could be over, but you have to go on the potential here that what if they're found innocent? If they're found innocent, do they not get another chance to play again? Like it's, it's difficult to say, right? I mean, most teams, I think at this point are prepared that those players are likely never returning. Um, and even if they are found innocent, they are not required to sign them. Right. So, I mean, it's hard to say what the future holds for these guys. Uh, I know that just based on everything that we've learned about the case, I know things don't look good. But like I said, you have to let them have the opportunity to be guilt, uh, you know, not be guilty right off the bat. Here, that's why there's a process. That's why there's a trial. They're innocent until proven guilty. So we'll have to wait and see. But it's going to be a long, drawn out process. Um, instead of this rate, we now know 100% who those five players are, the charges that are laid. And they are all putting out statements. So we'll get further word from London police on Monday. And then probably a statement from the NHL shortly after. And we'll see where things go from there. But it's like I said, it, that's kind of like the 
the end of the beginning, so to speak. And this is like a new beginning where things are going to probably be long and drawn out for a long time. Uh, a lot of people are speculating, are these guys going to try to play hockey while they're waiting a trial or all that? I honestly don't know. Are they're all pending restricted free agents? Or are these teams going to want to sign them until they know the outcome of that? I honestly don't know. I wouldn't think so, but we'll have to see how this plays out. The other thing, too, about this is Dylan Dubé of the Calgary Flames was the first one to go on leave. The Calgary Flames statement at the time indicated that he was taking a leave of absence and was granted this by the team to deal with his mental health. He was going to be under the care of professionals and they you know, weren't going to be commenting on it further, but it was almost like you know, this positive send-off that he's going to get help. You know, and now they've had they've a lot of people online have been really upset over how this was handled on the Calgary Flames side. If you look at the statements from the Flyers and the Devils and the uh, team in Europe that Foreman Tim was with, none of them said anything like that. They all said that these players have requested a leave of absence for personal reasons. And they were granted it. And we're not making any comments about it at, that's, at this time, any more than that. The Flames didn't do that. And now the Flames put out an updated statement tonight, and it says that at the time when Dubé requested his leave of absence, that they didn't know about these pending charges. I don't know, man. Like, it's either they think we're stupid or they are. I'm not sure what it is, um, but I don't know how a player connected to this team could take a leave of absence without really being questioned. You know, and I understand, like, for, for personal reasons, maybe they're not required to really say a whole lot. I need a leave of absence. But to say it's for mental health reasons, like, like I said before, is it fair to assume that Dylan Dubé's mental health might not be in a good state right now? Probably. He's probably stressed out dealing with these uh, allegations. I'm sure of it. But the leave of absence is to deal with the ramifications of these allegations and to, you know, to deal with it legally, not just to deal with your mental health. So it's a very misleading statement. And I'm just not buying what the Flames are saying here that they had no idea. It just doesn't seem logical to me. These teams know that this uh, junior team's been under investigation for close to two years. They know that, you know, there's not shocking news to find out they have a player on their team connected to that and that they could have been, you know, had an involvement in anything. I don't know. I just, I, I expect better from the Flames. It's disappointing to see how that was, how that was handled. Uh, On to some other news. Um, Elliot Friedman today talking about the Arizona Coyotes, their future relocation, all that. Essentially, uh, Friedman says that the NHL knows it has other options right now, that being Utah and Salt Lake City. And nobody wants them going into next year as a, it's still playing in Mullet Arena in Arizona and not have a concrete, hardcore plan in place where they know exactly when they're going to have a new arena. They'd like to have a plan now, but they don't. And they'd like to have it here pronto, but again, are they going to get it or not? So essentially, I know that the NHL is probably going to try to buy the Coyotes as much time as they can, but time is ticking. Now, I know I've seen some Coyotes reporters and Craig Morgan, who covers this very closely, say like nobody ever said the All-Star break was a hard, fast date where things had to be settled. And no, that's true. I've I've seen both the league and other sources say, that that was like a preferred timeline, but they'd like to have it in place by. Is that hard and fast, like hardcore, you know, you're done if you don't have it in place? Probably not. But I understand the Winnipeg Jets got their team back. It was announced like in May. Um, but, you know, I don't know that this is going to want to drag on too long. So, like what Freeman's saying is the NHL knows they have an option. They're starting to put the pressure on them. But, you know, they're going to probably try to buy them here a little bit more time. But I, I don't know how long this is going to go on. I would say by, at the very least, by the end of the regular season. If they don't, like, they, they don't have a lot of time left. But at the end of the day, if the Coyotes do have to move, I think it's a fair, foregone conclusion. Salt Lake City will be where this team ends up. Time will tell, though. On to the... Um, now, the other big thing we might see this weekend at the All-Star game and the All-Star break is that it is expected that Gary Bettman likely going to meet with the media, likely going to give uh, some updates on some things. And according to TSN insider Chris Johnson, who also writes for The Athletic, he's saying that it's quite possible, not a guarantee, but possible that there could be a big announcement 
regarding international hockey events, uh, of course, at this All-Star Game event. Uh, of course, All-Star Game, when there's lots of eyeballs on the league and all the big stars around, you know, great time to make announcements. Um, clearly, they want to have a World Cup or some format. I mean, they're not been probably not a traditional World Cup, but like some version of it, probably watered-down version in 2025. You get the Olympics coming up in 2026, and they'd like to have a normal World Cup in 2028 and have every every two years have an international event. And apparently there's a big conference call on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, between that uh, the Batman will be a part of with the International Ice Hockey Federation. And because of that, they feel it's possible that by the time we get to the weekend and all the All-Star festivities – that they may be in a position to make an announcement on some of these events, make them official. Um, you know, obviously the NHL players made it clear in the last CBA that they wanted to go to the Olympics, and the NHL appears to be on board for that, but it still has to be, you know, ironed out exactly how it's all going to work and made official. So we could be getting that possibly this weekend. Hope it would be nice to know for sure that these things are going to be taking place. Now, on the trade rumor side of things, we got a variety of teams that we want to take a look at. I know on TSN Insider Trading tonight, uh, Darren Dreger talking again about Chris Tanev. Tanev's still a hot commodity, hot topic out there. He does mention how the Ottawa Senators have taken a major leap forward to being one of the front-running teams that are showing the most interest. Doesn't mean they're a front-runner to land Tanev, but they are clearly rated at the top when it comes to levels of interest. He also references the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, we know Brad Tree Living had interest in Tanev and Zadorov both earlier in the year. Unfortunately, never worked out. Zadorov has already moved, um, and now Tanev is still waiting for his next move here. Uh, again, we know that the interest from Ottawa's side in Tanev is more about the future than it is right now. Um, they would definitely want, if they trade for him now, the, the main reason would be to get ahead of free agency and to try to get him onto their team for the rest of this year to help them finish stronger, even though if it means you know may not mean making the playoffs, but that might be too far gone at this point. But at the end of the day, it requires an extension to be in place so he can be a foundational piece for the next two, three years. Um, so if they can get a deal with the Flames to land Tanev, you know, that's it. But they, like the Drigger said, if Tanev would rather be a rental and chase a cup for this end of this year, and then the Sens, if, if they don't get him um, and he doesn't sign an extension with whoever he goes, they will be right at the front of the line to talk to him when it comes to free agency. In July, the Leafs, of course, will be right there as well, trying to figure things out. But to be honest, the Leafs don't have a ton of assets that I think they're willing to move. So I think getting a trade done for a guy like Tanev is going to be tricky. The Sens do have a lot more when it comes to younger players, draft picks, um, and some good prospects that they might be willing to part with to land a, a solid D man to really, uh, you know, help with that part of their game. So we'll see. But right now the two Ontario teams appear to be right at the front of the list. I would not rule out other teams as well. There have been other teams linked to Tanev, and it wouldn't be shocking if he does end up maybe going elsewhere. But right now they're the teams getting the most attention according to the NHL insiders. Now another name to watch in New York, uh, of course on TSN Insider Trading, they're also talking about the fact that the Rangers are expected to definitely add. They're certainly a strong contender for the Eastern Conference right now, uh, first place in their division. And certainly at this point, um, they're looking to do a variety of things, most likely adding within the forward group. Um, now, one name to come up that they are taking calls on, and the, the reporters are believe that they would be willing to move in the right deal is Capo Caco. The former number two overall pick could be a player that does end up going out in a trade to land a more experienced top six player who can help round out this team and give them a better chance to win the Stanley Cup. Um, so, you know, I know that the Rangers have been linked to a variety of players. We've heard Monaghan in Montreal. We've heard, you know, they might want to try to bring back Tarasenko out of Ottawa. We've heard they might want to bring back Fratrano from Anaheim. Any of those teams would probably have some level of interest in Kako uh, in return. So... Maybe that might be a deal that you do see. Uh, I've seen some whispers about K. Andre Miller maybe being available, but to me, they only do that if they think they can bring in an even better defenseman, which I'm not sure it's going to be really all that easy to do. Um, I'd be shocked if they move Miller. If they did, it's going to have to be a way bigger deal than we've talked about thus far. So we'll see. But the Rangers are definitely a team to look to add, and Kako is definitely in play. And somebody they're willing doesn't mean he gets moved for sure, but depending on the player that they want to bring in or players that they did last year, 
He's a player that's uh, on the block. So we'll see where that goes. Also, Elias Lindholm, another Calgary Flame getting a lot of attention. I've seen an uh, article in The Athletic with a mock trade getting him to be a Boston Bruin. We've talked for a long time that the Bruins are like the – Ideal fit for him. I mean, of all the guys you could look for them to add to be, you're not going to replace Patrice Bergeron. You just can't. He's too good and too unique of a player. But if you look around the NHL about what might be available, Lynn Holm is probably as close as you're going to get. Uh, terrific two-way center. Contract's not too bad for this year. And at this point, he could be a big piece of that team's future should he land with the Bruins. The mock trade in the uh, athletic article is as follows. I want to see what everybody thinks of this. To get Lynn Holm... To the Bruins, uh, it recommends a trade of a 2025 first-round pick along with Trent Frederick and youngster Matt Potra. Now, that might seem like a big price tag, but the Flames are going to drive a hard bargain to get a player like Lindholm's caliber. Um, you know, at the very least, I can see one of those roster players, preferably Matt Potra. They can get a, a first round pick and a player like Potra's, uh, you know, as a young up and coming young player already drafted like that. I think the Flames liked, would like a deal like that. I think that would absolutely work. Now, would the Bruins want to do something like that? I don't know. I mean, at the same time, you know that the Bruins are a team that's going to be you know, in go-for-it mode. I think they need to, really. Uh, they still have an older team, even though they lost Krejci and Bergeron. Like, they still have a lot of players that are kind of, you know, getting up there a bit. Um, they're, they do have, they're not as old as they used to be, obviously, losing those two guys. But, you know. Look at Brad Marchand, James Van Riemsdyk, you know, Charlie Coyle. They're not, like, super young. Um, but they do have some younger pieces, like Apatra. Do they really want to part with that? You know, he could be a big you know, next wave of the future, so to speak. So, um, I don't know. I mean, they have to look at things and see what they think they can do. But their goal is definitely to win the Stanley Cup. There's no doubt about that. After winning the President's Trophy last year and having a historic campaign and falling short in the first round, they're definitely not going to want to see that happen this year. And I can definitely see them trying to make a big move to add. And Lindholm has been the perfect target all along. Although, like I said, it's going to be expensive. So it's unclear if they're willing to pay that big of a price. Let me know your thoughts on all today's news and rumors down in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around so you don't miss any future updates. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.